Welcome everyone to AWS reInvent 2024. I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios. We have got a wonderful interview for you right now, joined by two guests. We have Andy Logani from EXL, the Chief Digital Officer, as well as Sanjay Josie, the Senior Vice President of Analytics at EXL. Welcome everyone, thank you. Thank you for having us. How has AWS been for you so far? I know it's very early in the day, um, but I know that this is a very important time for you to connect not only with AWS, but also with potential clients. It's fascinating to see newer innovations. Uh, it's always great to do networking with clients. And uh, it's always terrific to look at the out of the possible as to how we can combine the best technology with the client needs and really deliver the outcomes. You have set me up perfectly for my big question to you. Why should companies work with EXL? Uh, at the end of the day, EXL is very deep in some chosen verticals like insurance, banking capital markets, healthcare and retail to name a few. We've been in the business for 25 years. That brings us terrific expertise in those domains. What we've also done over the last 16 years uh, built tremendous knowledge of end-to-end -end data management and some data assets that we have, proprietary data rights that we have. And then uh, we also significantly invested in AI. So if you look at the promise of AI, it requires the marriage of the domain knowledge of the industries, the data, and artificial intelligence. And EXL has the ability to stitch it together and deliver the outcomes and really help the clients meet the AI ambitions. That's why companies should work with us. You really touched on something that I think is one of the cornerstones of what separates EXL um, in the space, which is your ability to drill down it into domain. You touched on that briefly. Can you tell me a little bit more about how your data team really provides solutions directly for those clients in some very specific scenarios, healthcare, banking, things like that? Actually, let me take an example. Yeah. We just launched uh, one of industry's first insurance large language model. The reason we were able to do that, uh, number one, is because 20 years of history of managing complex bodily injury claims, medical records, commercial underwriting, commercial property claims, that gave us tremendous knowledge of how the data works in this space and our ability to do proper data tagging that is required for these uh, language models. Then we brought in our expertise of um, the industry and how these processes are done. So we took the data, we took the insurance knowledge, and we combined it with the uh, AI stack, and we were able to deliver superior outcomes. So we just don't want to create things that are already solved for. We create things that helps client deliver meaningful value. In this instance, the claims, decisions that were happening were much accurate. They were much faster, uh, and actually they were 40 to 50% cheaper. So on the accuracy, on the cost front, and the speed, they were superior. That's an example of marrying data, domain, and AI, and helping our clients deliver value. He has given a great example of a use case uh, that really sets the stage here. But speaking more broadly, how do you see Gen AI impacting the data landscape and the work that you do? Yeah, I think it's going to be a tremendous impact. I think there are three different dimensions that we look at when, when we see the impact. The very uh, first one is around the way of working. So when you look at all the li stakeholders in this ecosystem, the business users, the engineers, the uh, documentation that's involved, all of those will undergo a significant shift because Gen AI simply makes it more productive, more you know automated to do so. So that way of working will fundamentally change. The other very important dimension for us is that the, the liabilities and risks around data will need to be monitored more uh, closely because now you're talking about making decisions and and really you know human less human involvement in those decisions responsible AI and the responsible data piece of it become very very important so that focus on data is going to come about uh, very much the third very important thing for us is the architecture or the way the architect data will fundamentally shift for example a role of synthetic data in AI uh, the role of, you know, for example, uh, data products now being delivered from an AI perspective. So those kind of shifts in architecture is what we see. One of the biggest impacts is around um, the unstructured data 
the potential of unstructured data was always there. We couldn't realize it because the technology was lagging. With Gen AI, that changes. So you're going to see a large amount of unstructured data now coming into the analytics domain. And I think that's going to be another big impact. So these are three or four dimensions on which I see some, some uh, you know, huge impact for Gen AI will create on, on data. When this fails for clients, it fails spectacularly. And your job is to make sure that does not happen. My last question really to both of you is what advice would you give for clients, particularly in working in this space? We're talking Gen AI, it's still a hot, a hot word, right? A, a buzzword, but it carries so much depth and weight to it in where we're going um, as uh, you know, on the global scale in the data infrastructure and what we can glean in the insights. So what advice would you give for clients? Yeah, great question. Uh, see, uh, don't take a hammer chasing the nail. Uh, you know, most companies took generative AI and they said, how can I find a use case to implement generative AI? My first advice is, look at for problems you're solving for your business and the impact you want to create for your customers and use AI to reimagine the business for you. It starts there and then you stitch the best data because data essentially is critical to meet the promise application to your own businesses and your vertical, and then combining with the most superior techniques to ensure that you deliver that value. That's my biggest piece of advice. Technology will keep evolving. You just have to make sure that you're solving the right business problems. Your thoughts. And I agree with that. And from purely from a data perspective, an additional thing I would like to point out is the testing element of data is extremely critical. Most of the programs that I see uh, with high risk are ones that have underestimated the need for testing, underprovided for time and even you know budgets towards testing. And so data testing is something that customers should look at much more seriously in light of what's happening with Gen AI. The other uh, quick thing I would point out purely from a data perspective is edge cases are your worst enemies. Uh, the ability that Gen AI provides to now work on those edge cases and then bring them to life while you are testing, you should you know, absolutely take advantage of that. That removes a big risk that I see on, on data programs. Sanjay, Andy, thank you so much for making the time to speak with me today. I appreciate it, everyone. I'm Steph Strickland. You're watching GeekWire Studios.